All right, we are talking to ourselves in the middle of Hamburg, Germany. Um, we just got into town, I don't know, a couple hours ago and uh, rode the subway to um, uh, this, uh, what, I guess, red light district for, for I don't know, a better way to describe it. What do you think so far? Uh, it's very interesting. I think this is more risque than Las Vegas, which it, is it saying something. Is. Yeah. So we haven't been able to check into our hotel yet, so we've just been kind of wandering around, had some donor kebab, which is like, uh, kind of like a hero. Um, I thought it was pretty good. It was, it was pretty good. So, um, we're going to walk around and, uh, do some exploring. Yeah. Good and talk. There's our hotel over there, the Sleep Hotel. It's pretty nice. It's yeah, we haven't been in the room, but eh, it's nothing fancy, but it'll work. Okay. We're going to our room for the first time in Hamburg. It's, it's small, but it works. Well, here we are in the St. Pauli Fish Market. We are kind of, uh, it's still, what day is it, Saturday? Friday. Friday, Friday afternoon. It's just a few hours for, um, later yeah. than when we did we this We took earlier. a big nap, so, anyway. Which we, we really needed. We did really need. We're kind of scoping out the port, seeing if we can see our, our cruise ship, but so far, no luck. Kind of a cold and dreary day. It's about probably in the upper 50s, maybe 60, but we're bundled up and uh, having a lot of fun checking out the city. Yep, so we're just kind of wandering around, checking things out, and here not too long we're going to try and find some German food for dinner. Yep, after some German food for lunch. After some German food for lunch. All right, we'll, uh, we'll check in. This is where we were earlier, but there are a few more people out now. So we just got on the ship. Tell us we what's just going got on. on the ship. They greeted us with uh, champagne and mimosas for the champagne, and then we went straight to the buffet, and it's fantastic. Um, I had Indian, Tim had Mexican, Chilean, and Spanish. And Spanish. And uh, it's crowded, so we're sitting outside, but it's nice. This is the Hamburg skyline. We're uh, aboard the ship and uh, we'll probably I think we're ready to set sail in a couple of hours. We are at the top level of the ship. This is the lawn club. Just checking everything out. This is the grass. Yes, that's real grass. So we just got into our room and we're very impressed. Is this true? It's very nice. It is and they nice. Left us a nice bottle of champagne. Yeah. And there's the bathroom. Bathrobes. Yes. And we're obviously still <clears throat> in Hamburg, so, but here's our veranda, and there's the city. Down there are um, people who are waiting to see the ship sail away. 
Um, apparently this is kind of a big deal for the city. This is the first cruise for this ship and and uh, it's it's employed a lot of people and a big deal for tourism, I suppose. So all these people are seeing us off. for a minute. We're in the hideaway, which is a little coffee bar on the ship. There's Tim. Hello. Hello. Guten Tag. How's your orb? <laughs> it's raining outside and that's 52 degrees. But uh, looks like there's probably a storm. It's very foggy. Take a picture of ourselves. <laughs> We're in a giant chair. I don't think you can see it. There. Okay. One, two, three, cheese. We're sitting on the top level of the ship. The lawn club. Yes. And uh, on one side over there we have France. And on the other side. We have England. Since I'm sitting on the left and you're sitting on the right, am I France and you England? Yes, the dividing line is right between us. We're in different countries. So we don't like each other. Uh -oh. And there is England. What's the plan? The plan is to do my makeup and oh. scram. Well, we are all dressed up and ready to go out to eat. We are. There's an old English couple that we found, about the only other people we found who speak English. We might find them or sit with some more Germans. Um, or by ourselves. Yeah, that's, yeah, right, that's another option. So, um, yeah, ready? Ready. All right. Bye. We are kind of hugging the coast of, of England. Um, you probably can see, I don't know if you can see or not, but um, down at the bottom is Paris and uh, sort of in the middle of the screen is London and of course we are, yes, thank you for pointing that out, um, yeah, and uh, of course that circle there is us, um, but the interesting thing is that it's 10 o'clock right now and we're so far north that it's still very light out at 10 o'clock. The seas have died down substantially. Uh, it was it was a bumpy ride overnight and during the early morning, but it's much smoother. It's still pretty chilly though. It's in the upper 50s, so it probably won't get warmer for a couple of days until we get further south. But we just saw some of the evening entertainment and your opinion. It was great. It was uh, Cirque du Soleil on the high seas. Basically, yeah. And dinner was great. So dinner uh, was really good. We both ordered the same thing. Yep, which was uh, some sort of Mediterranean pasta. chicken pasta yeah. and cherries jubilee. jubilee. Well, good evening. It is ten oh six, and uh, we just got back from dinner and the show. And it's still light outside. It is still light. It's been a very rough day. Um, we had breakfast delivered to our room, and then we slept for a little bit, and then went to lunch, and then went to the hot tub, and had dinner, and. Um, I think we took another yeah, 
Yeah, so it's, it's been rough, but, you know, we, we made it, so. Yeah, it's been a good day. I wish uh, every day... Oh, and we forgot to mention, every time we left our room and came back, um, they've picked up uh, fresh towels, fresh Made the sheets, bed. Yeah, chocolates on the pillow. Yeah. I could get used to this. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's been a lot of fun. We're enjoying our trip. Talk about what you had for dinner that was unusual. I had uh, escargot was probably the most unusual. So uh, I've never eaten little baby snails before. What'd you think? Mm, pretty good. Yeah. yeah. I had one. It was okay. Mm. I, I don't know that I need to get one again. Yeah. I had... We can say we ate it. Mm hmm Yeah. Crossing from the Atlantic Ocean to the Mediterranean Sea, and at this point we can see both Spain, obviously in Europe, and Morocco in Africa. So at this vantage point we can see Spain. Side. We still have the view of Morocco, but now we're in the hot tub. No cameras. <clears throat> so here we are in the hot tub in the solarium. So it's inside, and that means no sunscreen is required. That's true. And we have um, one country behind us and another country in front of us, and we just entered the Mediterranean Sea from That's the Atlantic. Correct. And also, unusually, we are the only people in the hot tub. Yes. We've learned that the Germans are not shy about uh, personal space. Or so we are here alone. Well, okay. <laughs> Well, it's lunchtime. We're in the dining room. We've got a nice view. Excuse me, a nice view out in the ocean. Tim's starting with bread. How is it? It's good. Good. It's busy in here. Again, they uh, defaulted to bringing us the German menu and to ask for English. That's okay. We are out on the Mediterranean, 
Let's to get ready for dinner. So what's on the uh, what's on the agenda? Um, I think we are going to dinner, and then I think you said something about jazz. I believe so. And then I think it's dance party. Oh boy. Oh, and the show, I think. All right. Well, full evening on tap, I guess. Yes. So this morning, before uh, everyone disembarks for Barcelona, they did a big breakfast buffet, brunch buffet, it's fantastic. They have some beautiful ice sculptures. So over here looks to be a fish, a sushi, sushi bar. We'll walk around here. All kinds of fantastic food, cold cuts, Would you like to crab legs, the side a little bit? Cheddar uh, salads, yeah, yeah. omelets. Mm. Here's the prettiest shrimp cocktail I've ever seen. Some beautiful fruit sculptures. Oh, I didn't even see these earlier. Swan. Here's the crepe station. That's what I had for breakfast. That's great. Here is the magnum opus. We're still on our veranda, but we've got a great view of Barcelona. Um, there is where we will be going later while we're down in Barcelona. It's called La Sagrada Familia. It's a cathedral that's still under construction and has been for several decades. And we have arrived in Barcelona. Uh, how do you say hello? Hola. Hola. Yo soy tourista. <laughs> <laughs> um, I might be speaking the Spanish while we're here. Oh, okay, that's probably a good plan. Uh, well, ready to explore? Yes. Estás listo para explorar? Si. Sí. We are walking across the bridge. What do you think? We just got to uh, sort of a populated area. Looks very European and excellent. We are headed to La Rambla and we have found it. Uh, all of our tour books told us was even for pickpocketers, and turns out uh, they were right. Um, we were just sort of uh, walking along, and I thought I felt something in my backpack, and 
turned around and it was wide open. So luckily all that was in there was a sweatshirt, but lesson learned. Yeah, we moved everything so there's not really any chance of us losing anything valuable. So it's supposed to be the uh, pickpocket capital of Europe and I guess it's right. That's right. But, oh well, no loss. We didn't lose anything. Get out of my frame. How do you like Barcelona? I want to say something witty in Spanish. Unfortunately, I don't know any Spanish, so I can't be witty. And what's that? It's the cathedral. Only one? This is the only one in all of Barcelona? No, but that's what it's called. <laughs> we didn't get to go in the last cathedral, but um, we think our chances are going to be better with this one. market in Barcelona. You see that ham hocks behind you? Just finished dinner and um, it was excellent. It was good. And we're walking back to La Rambla, which is the big pedestrian walkway. Don't worry, I'm, I'm pickpocket proof. We'll I'm see. Tim is going to repeat in Spanish. I don't think that's exactly true, but 
What did you think of um, Barcelona? Um, Barcelona is a beautiful, beautiful city. People were fantastic. The food was fantastic. The drink was fantastic. The sights were fantastic. What do you think? Yeah, we had a great time. Um, it's about 9.30 or so, 10 o'clock. Yeah, it's about 10 o'clock. We are supposed to be back on the ship at 11.45, so we're headed back that way. It'll take us 45 minutes or so to get there. So we are at a monument right now um, dedicated to Christopher Columbus on the end of a big pedestrian area. So uh, we've probably got about a 40-minute walk ahead of us. And yeah, it was a great day. It couldn't Beautiful have been better. Beautiful Spanish night. Yeah. The air is very Mediterranean. I guess. That I don't know what that means either. But. Yeah. Yeah, so unfortunately we have to head back. We have one more day at sea and um, we'll be in Rome after that. So yeah, unfortunately yeah. we have to help have to head back, but at least we have the beautiful ship waiting for us. We do. Alright. Adios. Here we, go. we are out to take what I think sadly is gonna be our final tour of the ship before we go to dinner. And we're both a little sad about that. Yeah, we have uh Still some fun things coming up in Rome and Dublin, but you know, we've been on the ship for seven days and about to say goodbye to that. Yeah, sad to say goodbye. It's been a, a really nice cruise. So, ready? Yep. We are in the elevators where we have spent a decent amount of time. Um, thank you for this direction. Call me Vanna White. Dick Let's see who's there when we uh, when the doors open. <laughs> and it's not Las Vegas, but there is a casino. How much did we drop apparently, at the casinos? Apparently, as much as the Germans did. There's nobody in there. Yeah. We, much like, also much like Las Vegas, we spend zero dollars in the casino. Nice acting. Alright! Ready, Maggie? That is Sardinia. <laughs> We are about ready to go to sleep on the final night of our cruise. You can see it's 11.14 and we are getting pretty close to Rome. So we should get there in about eight hours. Uh, so uh, we'll uh, go to sleep now and wake up bright and early in the morning, eat some breakfast and be on our way to Rome. Well, we just woke up and um, we have arrived in the port city of Civitavecchia, which is about 30 miles or so from Rome, but this is the port city where you know the cruise ships and cargo ships and everything else comes in to uh, uh, for people to get to Rome. So uh, we're gonna head down and eat some breakfast and uh, start working our way toward Rome. Okay, thank you. Oh Got it. But we're going to Rome to change. Nobody knows. Hello. I'm or no? Nice. Okay. We just got off the train. We are in Rome. Uh, we know our hotel is somewhere around here. We're not exactly sure, so we're using the iPhone to see which exit we took. And iPhone is also not sure. <laughs> it's what? It's not sure where we are. Uh, it'll find us. But uh, uh, this is the huge uh, terminal in Rome. And we just arrived in our hotel room in Rome. 
kind of different looking, but considering uh, how, what it took to get here, it's fine. It's fine. It's adequate. It's not concierge class. Yeah, a little bit of a step down from service on the ship, but here's our uh, view. So there's the Coliseum in the background, and we are sitting here on the bus. Day one of our tour. Yes. What do you think of Rome so far? It's gorgeous. It's a little more history than Las Vegas. want you to have your video camera. No, I managed to get a few shots though. It, it, it broke the rules just slightly. Because you had to? Yeah, because you told me to. And so, um, talk a little bit about after we got out and decided to get a drink. What did we discover? Europeans like carbonated water and it's pretty awful. <laughs> This wall is what separates Italy from Vatican City. So right now on this sidewalk we're in Italy. On the other side of this wall is Vatican City. Tell us what we're looking at. Well, we just walked inside St. Peter's Basilica. Uh, it's also beautiful in a different way. Different uh, decorations and ornate. Last time I checked, 
checked, we skipped mass. And here we are. We decided to uh, go uh, get some margarita pizza from a street vendor. I think we'll have dinner in a couple of hours, but haven't had really anything to eat all day, so got pizza and Rome street vendor, good combination. We've climbed up to the top of one of the seven hills that surrounds Rome. Of course, nowadays Rome has grown over all of the hills. These are apparently the most famous steps in Rome, built in 1725. I don't have any Italian, or I would say it right now. Arrivederci. Arrivederci. Pizza. Pizza. Returning to our hotel room after a long day of traveling, and we're about four blocks away, and we're right next to the, uh, the big bus station and, and uh, train station right there. So we've got about four blocks, and we will uh, call it a day after lots of sightseeing in our first day of Rome. But day two is coming up tomorrow. How was dinner? Dinner was delicious. So was mine. I'm really glad that. We have a second day to do sightseeing, so it didn't feel like we had to cram absolutely everything in today. Me too. We still have a lot on our plate. Yeah, you could you could spend a whole year in Rome and not see everything. I'm convinced. This is the Colosseum. now inside the Colosseum.
So why is the floor of the Colosseum, why does it look like a maze rather than a flat floor? Well, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but back across the edge, back there, um, it looks like they have reconstructed part of the flooring. So what actually you're seeing down here, the walls and crumbling brick and whatnot, um, were below the stage back in the day. So that's where they held the prisoners and the lions and the bears and the gladiators. And here's the Pantheon. So this is the Tiber River that goes across Rome, and here in the distance is um, a castle, and the bridge leading to it was uh, for centuries the only bridge that led to the Vatican. This is our last night in Rome, and we're heading to the Trevi Fountains one last time. Ready? Back at the Trevi Fountains. We were here yesterday, but we decided to come back one last time before we leave Rome. And, and make a wish. Yeah, what did we just do? Um, we just took a, a, a two cent uh, euro piece and kissed and put a piece over our shoulder and said we would come back to Rome. Apparently, that's yeah. also good luck or Superstition. something. Superstition. If you throw a coin in the fountain, you're supposed to come back to Rome sometime. Okay, so I guess we'll, uh, we'll come back sometime. So we'll check in with you next time. We gave ourselves four hours to get around, get on the train, get to the airport, get through security and that whole process. And fortunately, we've got plenty of time and we're just sitting here to kill probably 30 minutes or an hour, I'm not even sure what time it is, to get on our flight. So we had no problems at all. What are you looking forward to in Dublin? Probably the Book of Kells and the Guinness Brewery. What about you? Uh, so it sound good to me. Alright, ready to get on our flight soon? Arrivederci. Well, we have just arrived in our room in Dublin. Hey there, I'm in the mirror. <laughs> and, uh, it's, an it's, improvement. it is, it's, it's much improved over uh, our room in Rome. So, uh, we have no complaints. I doubt we'll spend a whole lot of time here, but either way, um, it's nice. Yeah. It's clean. Yeah. Now we can see. That's good. And our view 
and looks down on the street below. We're walking the streets of Dublin for the first time, so this is, except for getting to our hotel room, the first that we've seen of the city. And uh, it's nice so far. It's a little bit chilly, so it's not too bad. It's probably mid-60s. Um, so we're headed down to the Guinness Brewery right now, where they brew all of the Guinness for uh, much of the world, including the U.S. So, um, what do you think so far? Well, I'm just happy that um, we averted a near disaster with the luggage at the airport. Uh, looked for a good, oh, 20 minutes or so, like it was lost, and we were going to have to deal with that whole mess. But luckily they found it somewhere, and it showed up. So, it all worked out. It all worked out. Now, uh, we're just excited to be in Dublin and take it all in. One of the most interesting things about Dublin is that they drive on the wrong side of the road. And because of that, it's kind of dangerous for pedestrians because they're apt to look the wrong way. So it says on the street that you should look right and look left. But uh, it's, it's interesting to see the cars going in uh, the opposite direction of where you're normally used to seeing them go. you get a free pint of Guinness included in the ticket price with a great view of the city we are seven floors above Dublin at the gravity bar at the Guinness brew house that over the last fortnight we have been in six sovereign nations. Right? Can you explain? Well, the United States, the four countries we've been to, and the Vatican. That's six. Where am I wrong? down the streets of Dublin and we're gonna try to find some dinner. I think we're gonna find some fish and chips maybe to uh, find, get some authentic culinary uh, Dublin something. Zee. Yeah. So tell me, uh, what do we have here? Well, we stopped on the steps of uh, St. James Church here in Dublin to get some authentic fish and chips. So we, uh, we just stopped in and it looks, look, wow, there's a ton of fried food here, but um, fish and chips with vinegar all over it that, uh, that they poured onto it, so it's pretty delicious. We haven't really eaten anything today, so... Deep about, fried goodness. Yes, it's about, I don't know, 8, eight or 8.30, and uh, this will be our first real meal of the day, so looking forward to it. So we 
We've uh, just embarked on our second and really final day in Dublin. Final full day of our honeymoon, actually. Um, first stop this morning was to try and take a tour of the government and parliament uh, buildings, but unfortunately we learned they only do those on Saturdays. So, uh, we sort of doubled back to change plans and came over here uh, to Trinity College, which you can see behind me and around me, um, which was founded in the 1500s, so it's quite old. Um, and uh, one of their claims to fame is uh, their library, which includes the Book of Kells, uh, which was written in the eight, 800s uh, by a series of Irish monks. So we just went inside and saw the book and a bunch of their other old books, and it was very interesting. This is the Liffey River, which splits Dublin in half. We bought a couple of sandwiches and now we're trying to find uh, St. Stephen's Green, which is one of the major parks in town. Yeah, it's uh, Dublin Central Park. And we found it, St. Stephen's Green. Tim is uh, making some new friends as he eats his lunch. What'd you name him? He has yet to be named. No trip to Ireland would be complete without a visit to St. Patrick's Cathedral. For two people who drink lots of coffee, we've had some difficulties getting coffee in Europe. The last three countries, when we've said coffee, we've actually gotten espresso. Um, but here we ordered coffee and we got the real thing, exactly what we were I'm expecting. So excited. Yeah, we're looking forward to this. Taking a minute um, out of our day to explore the bar at our hotel. It's pretty neat. So now that we're back in our hotel room, Tim. Tell me about your supper. Uh, I can say that Irish food is not my favorite type of cuisine out there. Um, we had, I had um, Irish stew, which was lamb, potato, and uh, carrots, and it, it was um, it was not delicious. And that's coming from Tim Richardson, world's least picky eater. We knew what we were getting into when we, you know, when we arrived at the restaurant. I mean, it is Irish food after all, but um, I, uh, I think my expectations were a little higher than, than you know, the, the food that was brought out to us. But you know, it was it was it was uh, traditional Irish food. We're here in Ireland, so you know, we're we're so glad we went there. We we got sort of what we expected, and now we're gonna get a piece of pizza. <laughs> traveling back to the U.S. starts right now. It is, I don't know, uh, probably about 5.45 and uh, we're waiting here to catch a bus in Dublin um, to head back to the airport. Uh, we have about, I don't know, 12 uh, hours of traveling ahead of us. So. And then it's back to work tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, um, we've had a great two weeks. Um, we've learned a lot and done a lot of things in four different countries. So. Um, 
you know, I, uh, I wouldn't say I'm ready to go back at all. We've had a great time, but I, you know, after two weeks, I guess it's time. I guess so. All right, back to the U.S.